The arrow diagram is a project planning tool used to show the sequence of tasks, their dependencies, and critical paths using labeled arrows. The length of the arrow usually represents the estimated duration of each activity. If the arrows themselves are labeled with tasks, the diagram may be known as an activity on arrow diagram. If the nodes themselves are labeled with tasks, then it's usually called an activity on node diagram. The two main components in an arrow diagram are arrows and nodes. Arrows are labeled to represent a task or activity. The tail comes from a predecessor node and it points as its head to the successor node. The node is usually represented by a circle and this is an event or a milestone. In this example, activity A, which might be to gather requirements, starts at node 1, which may represent the beginning of a project. The 3 denotes 3 days will be allotted to the task. And upon completion of activity A, the head of the arrow represents the project will now be at node 2, which could be a milestone titled Requirements Gathered. Not all versions of arrow diagrams will have the duration. It may just say A, as here, or the arrows may be labelled with the actual activity, such as gather requirements, like here. If durations are included in the diagram, it needs to be noted somewhere what they represent, such as three hours or three days or three weeks. Dummy activities, or dummies, are another component in arrow diagrams, and these are represented by dashed arrows. They show dependencies between tasks without representing actual work. They have a completion time of zero, and we'll look at those shortly. The final component is the critical path. This is the longest path through the network and it determines the shortest possible time to complete the project. Again, we'll look at these later and there's a separate project planning tool to analyze these. Be aware that very simple arrow diagrams may not actually show the critical path. The numbers and letters don't mean a lot by themselves. As mentioned, the arrows represent activities and the time to complete them and the circles are nodes which are project milestones. Here's an example, node 1 represents the beginning of a project. The first activity, A, is to gather requirements, and it will take three days, at which point the project will be at milestone 2, which is that the requirements have been gathered. Now there are two activities which could be completed simultaneously or separately, depending on how the project is managed. Activity B is to identify stakeholders, it will take two days, and take us to milestone 3. Activity C is to conduct a feasibility study, and it will take us to milestone 4. The arrow diagram is good at showing which activities and milestones are dependent on others. For example, we can't reach milestone 7 until we have reached milestones 1, 2 and 4, and the activities between those have been completed. The concept of dummy activities can be confusing, and they may not appear in all arrow diagrams, so you may not be asked about them in an exam, but let's look at them just in case. There's a dummy activity in this example between node 5 and node 6 that I've labelled Z just to point it out. Representing a task that doesn't require any additional work, but indicates that milestone 5 must be reached before the activity H from 6 to 8 can begin. Let's work backwards. Activity H is conducting a stakeholder focus group on the user interface designs. But this can't be done until the stakeholders have been invited to the focus group, which is activity E, and is a direct dependency. But we can't show the stakeholders the designs until they have been created, which is activity D, and takes us to milestone 5. There is no further time-consuming action between node 5 and 6, but moving on from 6 and starting activity H requires both activity E and the dummy activity of having the designs ready at milestone 5 to have been reached. Advantages of using the arrow diagram include that they show dependencies clearly, and it's easy to see which tasks rely on others. They help to identify the critical path, which is shown here in red, which is useful for time-sensitive projects as it shows the minimum amount of time that the overall project may take. It supports time estimation for each activity, helping plan and manage deadlines, and it visually maps complex projects and aids communication between team members. Adding up the expected duration for the activities on the critical path, in this example, gives 11 days. So the development team knows that it will take a minimum of 11 days to complete the project, which is good for setting deadlines and expected timeframes. The arrow diagram does come with disadvantages, such as it being quite complicated for large projects with many tasks. It may require training to understand and create properly, it's time consuming to update if tasks or dependencies change, and it doesn't easily show how resources have been allocated or which tasks can occur at the same time and overlap.
In terms of client requirements, let's look at the suitability of the arrow diagram. So it's suitable for clients demanding precise timelines and dependencies as it clearly shows task order and critical paths. It's also suitable when clients want clarity in sequencing and the duration of tasks. However, it's less suitable for frequent changes or flexibility as updating the diagram can be time consuming and it's not suitable for very large or complex projects as it may become too cluttered.